Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 50 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, I worked on a big overhaul of the Engineer District, as well as then offloading the production of grapes to a smaller island, then setting it up with everything it needed for tractors and oil to kind of pump up its productivity. Today, I've got another overhaul for you, and it's a bit of a redo on what we just did, based on several people mentioning the idea of a central park, which I loved. So, I thought I'd have a crack at it. So let's begin. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, as I so often say, strap yourselves in. This is quite a long time lapse to kick off the episode with, and straight away I'm tearing down buildings, tearing everything I worked so hard on in the previous episode, tearing it down just like you tore me down, emotionally, in the comments, by saying, this isn't good enough. Why don't you make a central park, they said. Okay. Let's try. So basically, I'm looking for an area to do I'm joking, obviously, by the way. I'm looking for an area to do this. So I had um, a few different designs in mind, a few different locations, and I've played around a lot with it. So I've just cut out when I feel like it's appropriate to cut. I didn't, you know, show you going through the entire process of, no, I'm not going to put it here. I'll move it somewhere else. But I just wanted to show a few examples of where I thought to place it first time around, second time around, and so on. So I was trying to make it actually fairly central to the engineer district itself. It is supposed to be a sort of central park, but I couldn't really work out then where the town halls would go. It's such a struggle of a thing to do to try and build nicely, but like I need to have some semblance of making my you know in, uh, engineers a bit more productive or getting a bit more workforce out of them. I can't just have it like not covering anything. So it's trying to strike that balance, I guess is what I'm saying. I'm trying to strike the balance of having certain amount of coverage and then a certain amount of beauty and stuff, and, you know, trying to do it that way. So, largely here at the beginning, just pushing all these houses out to the edge of the map. Of course, that's what I have to do. We have almost no space left for overhauls. If I fill the map 100%, then I won't really be able to remove and rebuild things that easily. It would take even longer. I'd have to constantly go through upgrades. So, starting down at the worker docks, this is kind of where I like to start. Um, I was then thinking of maybe what if the... What if the park itself was kind of like... Um, What's the term? Like landscape as opposed to portrait, if you know what I mean? Like going across from left to right from the angle we're looking at right now. And ultimately, just again, last time I'll do this, but I decided no, that's not what I was going to do. As some of you may have seen the teaser screenshot I posted before, when I said that I was going to miss an episode because of this, um, you'll know that it's largely now going to be in a position that I'm starting to build out here. So, university, I was thinking, do we have the university in the park or on the edge of it? Bank on the edge of it? You know, constantly working out like how this is going to look. Uh, and trying to figure out how long should it be, you know, how big does this park need to be to look correct? And I ultimately decided on, I think it's about, um, I think 12 houses up uh, long, and then like something like eight across, something like that. But I wanted to have, you know, a significant amount of entry points in and out, so I left some gaps for roads to come in, and then we built our little fence and just put down some grass as a sort of a temporary holder. So I've, I've made a cut just there. Put all the restaurants just to that left of it, because that gives really good coverage of both the investors and the engineers. Um, so they are all snacked up on each other, which I'm not a massive fan of all the time, but it, it works, I think, and it'll work when we start to dress it up with ornaments a bit later. Still looking for a location for the bank and the university. Now, the university troubled me greatly in this corner here because of this odd shape, um, and I just couldn't really make it work right. I was like, I don't know why the university would look like that or anything. Um, but generally speaking, pretty happy with the restaurant, bar, and cafe there. Now putting back back in the town halls that I had removed. Very simply designing the one to the right. The one to the left, a bit more complicated. It'll have some better ornaments to go around it. And then just fixing this so that it's all level with each other. I decided to put a market all along the kind of fence line of the scholars here. So this long kind of farmer's market, market stalls all the way across. A little bit lazy, maybe. But I couldn't really think of what else would work there, and I like the idea. I've been to certain towns where there are these long streets of just, like, market stalls all the way down. Maybe not as long as, as what we've got going on there, but I think it makes sense outside of the scholarly district. And then the reason for the hospital being where it is is because it's across from the scholars, which I actually talk about later in the episode. So, decide that the bank should be the kind of entry point or the, the kind of cap off to the park, right? So as you walk up the park, you can see the bank then at the end. Lovely memorial as we lead up to it, and then fountains guiding around it. So that meant eroding, just or removing some of the houses in front of the bank, just to have that bigger opening plaza that feeds into it. But I think that looks really, really nice that way. 
So 90% of the park is encapsulated or enclosed with houses all around it, but except for the kind of opening out into the big bank area. Still trying to work out where to put that university. I kept moving it forward and back, which you can actually see throttled my uh, engineer population quite a lot. As soon as you move it away, they just start falling immediately. And I was trying to think of where this hospital was going to go. I like the idea of having it next to the scholars and then eventually we'll open it up so that the scholars can actually just walk straight through to it. And I'm really happy to see that once I did that, you can actually see, you know, scholars wearing their university robes or whatever heading into the hospital and stuff. It looks really cool. So I like to think of them as like interns and medical interns uh, over on that side. All right, so this one's actually quite interesting because this was such an odd shape. I couldn't figure out a way to put houses into it correctly. So I decided to have a weird staggered like look to it and create what I call alleyways. So this area, so not, not that I just name it alleyways. I mean, this area is what I call the alleyways, like this area of the city. And it's because like, yeah, there's these like multiple alleyways that kind of feed into each other, into the back streets of the engineer households. And eventually I'll add in um, some ornaments in there and make it look a bit nicer, but I actually think it works really well when you start turning the houses and changing their look to fit with the kind of archways that lead in it does look it looks like a a more organic bigger city block uh, a bigger block to the city So I'm really happy with that when it's empty like now not maybe not so much But when we fill it with ornaments in a bit, you'll see it looks quite good. I think anyway Still, still have some houses residing out on the beach that we're just pulling in to make it look a little bit nicer. I extended out the palace, kind of, um, the back of the palace paving, I guess you could say. Uh, just to make room for some of those houses there. And then by the university, I decided now to include the variety theater in with the university right across from the restaurants and stuff like that and put in a world's fair annex i actually really like this i like to think that the annex is where people are waiting to go into the theater or waiting for the bus stop or something like that and that the university itself is sort of like a, the a university of the arts um so it's similar to how the scholars are across from the hospital these guys are across from like a variety theater that's probably part of their uh campus in a way and obviously it makes sense, it made. It didn't even plan on doing it, but it made sense for the bus stop because the variety theater needs to be covered by a bus stop, so it all kind of worked. Uh, so this left side of the park here is all very dedicated to the arts, the bus stops, and things like that. Now at this point, just basically putting in some of the finishing touches to the ornaments. Obviously I like with the cafe, bar, and restaurant adding in the proper like uh what's it called canopies that come along with it i love the fact that they give you you know the red canopy yellow and green um, my guess is that they designed it that way because they do work off of the actual restaurant bar and cafe themes as well uh so that's pretty much that side done uh, at the end of this time lapse, i'm actually going to go in and have a, a longer spend a bit more time with each area and show you everything so if we're hopping around pretty fast don't don't worry too much about it the park now is a very difficult thing to pull off and I'll be interested to see if people have feedback on this. I don't mind redoing the innards of the park itself at some point. It's nice to walk around in, which I'll show as well later. But from the top down, it doesn't look that good. And I think it's just largely down to the fact that there isn't that many, many park ornaments. And that's to say an ornament with a base of grass, not a base of tiles. And then obviously, because it's a grid-based game, the pathways are all very rigid. Now, I tried to introduce a lot of randomness in there random kind of placement of trees, random, not placement of park ornaments, but seating and things like that, just to make it feel a bit more alive. And then I fix a lot of the pathways to kind of drift off into the grass or go out to the openings and the entrances from the side. So I feel like it looks almost as good as it can with the different update, uh, the different uh, park ornaments. And when you're down on the ground walking around it like here, it's like, this looks great. You know, you look out around the fencing, you're surrounded by these tall buildings all the way around. Um, so it looks really, really cool that way. And I was just checking out the uh, archways and having a look at what, I, what else I have to do. I always like to get a feel for what I've just built by walking around it. Because then you can say, like, does this make sense? And if it does or if it doesn't, I spotted that an archway didn't make sense. So I decided to actually just get rid of the archways on that side of things. And just have it kind of set as an alley. And that's because just the way the kind of L shape of the building is, you can't really fit two archways either side of it properly. Yeah. 
There we go. So now just adding in, in here I knew that I wanted to add back in the playground because that's what we had previously around this rough area. A big kind of engineer opening with the playground inside of it. So I just kind of shifted over one of the houses, it's not lined up anymore, but it looks like it kind of is, the way it kind of has that blend into it. Oh, actually I didn't remember doing that, I guess I just cut it up anyway. I actually thought it looked fine. I don't know why I didn't leave it, but anyway. I guess it looks better this way, <laughs> probably, probably. So yeah, so inside the playground or next to the playground in the alleyways, I've got that boulevard coming in. We end up putting some, I say we, it's just me, some trees and uh, one of those tourist stop gaps where they can kind of sit down and, and look out on a canopy. God, I'm jolting around a lot. I should have slowed this clip down a little bit more. I'm just trying to get the angle to see inside the alleyway, I guess. There it is. Yeah, it's, I mean, you saw it for like two seconds probably. So don't worry, at the end of this, I do go through everything. Uh, in a bit more detail. Right, so at the back of the palace, people had suggested using those um, botanical garden kind of modules, if you know what I mean, those big artisan gardens. And I tried to. I just largely cut that out, but I tried to. I just can't really feel like I can make it work. I don't, I don't really like them, to be honest. Now, if they had a grass base to them, then I would definitely put them in the park or put them back here or, or something like that, but... Yeah, I just didn't really feel like it was working that well. So I've just gone for a pretty simple kind of aesthetic. Two fountains, a boulevard walking around, pillars and flags to denote the royalty that reside inside of here. And then Hans von Schlong himself carved out of a bush at the front of the, at the back. Yeah, at the, at the center of the back of the palace. And then, of course, fountains on either side. I've used the uh, little hedge maze, or not hedge maze, just a hedge bush from the tourists there as well. And then we've got fountains interspersed between the columns at the back, which I think it look, can look quite nice. And that's basically that area done as well. And that's effectively it. So right after this time lapse, I'm going to go into this area and we'll have a look around all the kind of key areas that I've just, just touched up. Look forward to the feedback of this one. I do think it's better than it was. And um, I just struggled a bit with the inside of the, the park itself. But other than that, I think it, the placement and the, the, the scale and layout is, is really good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The new and improved Engineer District 3.0, now featuring sort of a Central Park-esque park. I don't know if we should be calling it a Central Park, really, because it's not quite central to the Engineer District. It's a little offset. It's not quite central to the island either. Um, but there you have it. There's actually a festival going on right now. It's a beer festival. They're breaking into the tourism section. It looks like they're all stopping into the, uh, <laughs> into the cafe. But they actually have quite a long run. It it's a bit strange for them to end where they are. I love seeing all the flags and uh, promotional art draped over the buildings as the festival is raging on. But it makes sense to actually come into the tourism section here as well. I thought now that the time lapse is over, we could take a moment just to soak in the scenery, as it were, and look at some of the highlights of the areas that I covered and have touched up. Because obviously with the camera moving back and forth a little frantically during the time lapse, you don't really get moments just to get rid of the UI and really soak in the scenes. So the first place I want to talk about was the park itself. Obviously I'm sure I've mentioned during the time lapse the struggle that I would have building it, but I just wanted to mention that, yeah, from the from the top down, it can look fairly grid-like. You know, it is Anno after all. There's not much I could do about that if I wanted to include these pathways. I thought about not including them at all. Uh, to just have kind of blank grass everywhere with the odd, you know, fountain or seating or whatever it might be. But definitely having the paths, I think, just looks nice for watching people moving along them. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. But where I'm most happy with it is when you get down on the ground and walk around yourself. Then the park really, like, feels like a proper park. And as you look around, you'll then see, like, the, the taller buildings. Sorry, the frame rate can get pretty bad in first person when you've got a lot of trees, it seems. Uh, and that's to do with alpha blending, I believe. But anyway... So yeah, so I'm actually really happy with it. When you're down on the ground, you're taking your pathway. Everything looks pretty good there. It's just from the sky. Oh my god, what the hell just happened? I was going to say, from the sky, it can look a little bit rigid, right? And I just don't really know if there's much I could do about that. And also, people have mentioned, why don't you use these kind of gardens that come from the artisan section stuff? It's because they all have a white tiling bottom base. So if there's an ornament overhaul in the future that gets rid of, like, I can swap out the... Uh, white tile base, for instance, for the hedge maze. I would love to include a hedge maze or something like that in here. I think you could really make it look a lot better if I could just get rid of that white tiling on the bottom. Otherwise, it's not going to feel like a park. It'll, it'll, it'll look strange. Trust me on that one. Uh, at least to me. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. We have the festival heading up the other way now. This is a beer festival. The most gleefully anticipated festival. The beer flows freely. Enjoy and good humor follow. Some like to call it Oktoberfest. 
All right, so that was the first kind of place I wanted to showcase and mention. I think it looks pretty good. I can't wait to see the feedback on this one. I definitely think it's all a big improvement over the last one, though, for sure. I think people could tell. You could hear in my voice. I wasn't quite sold on it last time with the uh, kind of staggered opening. Good idea, perhaps, but maybe it just didn't come full circle. All right, so the tourist section of the university is the next area I want to have a look at. So specifically with the three restaurants, we have our restaurant, cafe, and bar. Um, I'm loving how this looks personally. I, I think it looks really, really nice as well. I really like the World's Fair Annex as a kind of this a waiting area short of before they go into a variety theater, if they're waiting for the next show to come on or whatever it might be. I think that's really cool to do that. I just think it makes sense. Also, you could say that maybe they're waiting for the bus, either or. I like to think they're waiting for the variety theater. And I like to think this is sort of like a, a, a university of the arts where um, students are like acting and things like that. It's kind of a university for that. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. Now, I might change some of this stuff. I couldn't really think of what else to put around here, and I did do a bit of a rushed job on just finishing it off, uh, just ladening it with um, the tourism kind of cherry blossom trees, which do look nice, but there's definitely a bit too much of them, for sure. Um, I could go a bit mad and add boulevards around the edges again if I wanted to, but I don't know. I'll think about it. We obviously need a road that kind of connects into this side, and we need roads that uh, come out. And then we have the little archways to lead into the actual buildings themselves. Generally speaking, though, quite happy. If everything from here up, really happy with that. Need to just maybe figure out some ornaments around the university itself. God, it's so loud. I actually might have to turn the game down. The festival is just ringing, deafening in my ear. Uh, the next one, the next area I wanted to showcase was a place called the Alleyways, or at least that's what I'm calling it. And that's my staggered engineer area with the uh, kind of playground in the center. Again, this has a white tile base, so it fits pretty nicely in here. Uh, and, you know, works in terms of being in an urban area, I guess is the term. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually d delighted with how this turned out. I've never tried that before. It actually makes me want to build an entire city like this with just nothing being uniform for engineers. Uh, which would be really, really weird. I've stayed away from that. But I actually think it works. Now that I've kind of thought about connecting them with archways and having some entrances and having it open, boulevards walking through and, and stuff like that. I think it looks awesome. So really digging it. At the moment and I'm happy that we got the playground back in because we used to have a big playground out here surrounded by engineer households and some fountains and things so I haven't quite got the fountains in but I'm pretty happy that we got the uh, playground back in one thing that uh, bugged me to no end is trying to get these like little side streets and roads to line up and changing them to make them make sense but oh well I do what I can um, so that's the alleyways you know pretty pretty self-explanatory little maps and little um what do you call it uh, market stalls as you go in, a little street map to let you know where you're going if you're getting stuck or lost down these alleys. Uh, little pathways leading out, a place to wait. Maybe, you know, you've got your little market stalls. I like to think people are maybe getting little bits of food or something from there as well. Uh, little cafes, and etc. Uh, then the next place is the hospital. So the hospital is right outside from the university. I like to think then again, you know, or sorry, the scholars. Again, lots of students we can see filtering out now of the scholar district uh, as they are no doubt apprentices and interns at this hospital and they're learning for many years. So I wanted to use a different fountain here to kind of represent Mbesa. So we use the elephant fountain. And then outside from there, we have a steel clock house, uh, a telephone as well, people making calls, unfortunately letting them know that their loved ones have died or not, <laughs> depending on how you want to picture that. Uh, and I, this, the Cyclopean anchor is a bit of a strange one to add here, but I, I don't know, I just thought it looked nice. So I decided, yeah, I'm going to stick with that and uh, I'll leave that there. So yeah, that's basically the hospital. I just thought it made sense to kind of have it near the scholars. All very intentional, of course. Uh, the next area there then is the town hall. I didn't really get to show this in the time lapse. And it's this one here. So I've decorated it with some extra columns and archways and corner archways and stuff around the back of it to make it look just a little bit nicer. A little unique billboard ornament and then the Morris column. Those ones are actually pretty hard to come by. I think you get them through the World's Fair. And uh, essentially they're in the investor category in luxurious esplanade. Um, so they'll be in this place as well, where you get kind of weird and unique flagpoles. You get the same flagpole that's actually ba baked into the town hall. And I'd mentioned before that I like to stagger these. I might just put one here just for now and see what it looks like. Your ship has returned from its void. So it, it kind of looks like it's part of the same area now. Um, and then you've got, like, yeah, like I said, the billboard that we have over there. An extra little thing. So that's kind of just decorating that area. I just thought it looked quite nice, so I decided to point that one out. Uh, I've been meaning to fill this in with something, but I forgot to, I think. Uh, and then the last thing is then the, uh, the front of the bank. So for the first time I actually went with this same ornament mirrored over on the other side. But I actually think it quite works pretty well for something like the bank. This kind of 
Endless Skies Memorial, the High Life Memorial, basically. Uh, which no doubt we're going to be getting even more ornaments uh, later down the line if you're a Season 3 owner and if you plan on getting the High Life. I've no doubt there'll be little things in there. Look at the kids having so much fun with their balloons running into the bank. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything I've kind of touched up on. Uh, oh, as well, sorry, then the palace. That's the last thing. So again, I would have mentioned the struggles and the, the thought process with building this. Again, use, thinking of using the... Um, what do you call it? The artisan pathways and the different flower beds and stuff like that but I just I don't know just couldn't really feel like I could fit them in properly so I'm, I'm really happy with what I've got but I, I thought about having the garden things in here and just excuse me couldn't make it work but I love it now it's obviously the back of the palace you have to remember that so this is the technically it's like the back of the palace but it does look quite nice coming in this way ever still we have of course the vineyards to our left we have the research institute you know, towering over the edge of the palace and the scholarly districts on either side. Loads of fountains and pillars and flags denoting Hans von Schlong himself. There he is. I was tempted not to use him there because, of course, we've used him over in the uh, invested area here as we build up to the World's Fair. But hey, who's to say we can't have the same statue twice, huh? Hedgebush. Um, right, so I think that's pretty much it. So we still have to work on the zoo, make that look a little bit nicer. Uh, what's our attractiveness at? 11.02. Oh, that's because of the festival, though, as well. That's boosting attractiveness 250, so we're slightly over... Yeah, I think I'm about, like, 150 below 11,000, which is what I'd like to keep. Just because some of these houses are out on the extremes of where the universities could reach. And the university will only reach there if we have the fest, uh, the attractiveness at 11,000 at all times. It'll have a tiny, you know, 2% debuff or whatever if we don't. So we're getting a 16 plus range to our university here and our university, of course, inside the palace. And that's just about reaching here. It actually looks pretty good from here, but you can just about see there is a cutoff from slightly darker green to light green. So. You lose, you know, four or five tiles, and then these guys are going to get cut off, basically. In fact, you could actually see there's a couple tiles here that weren't covered, so... Tricky. Tricky to fit it all in. But, um, really, I, I love this place now. I really, really do. I'm going to be quite sad giving out the save file. <laughs> Seeing people destroy it, or, um, change it to probably make it way more efficient. <laughs> um, but I really like it. So, the, I've got some work up here to do. I want to add in some new ornaments up here, but, um... After that, then, I think I'm kind of done with the island, apart from the zoo. And then just some little little patches of blank space. Very little to go, that's for certain. And then I do have a lot of empty space out here that I could think to fill with something. I'm not really too sure what. Again, maybe some sort of docks out here that could look quite nice. Maybe a touristy cafe docks could kind of work. It did actually try to get me to do that in the quest line, if you remember. It was like, oh, set up a, um, a nightlife area, uh, which could kind of work. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much it. Time is playing, is it? Yes, it is indeed. So I had a ship moving here from Cape Trelawney. Is it here now? It is stacked to the brim with uh, steam motors that we've been buying from Old Nate. I was thinking about maybe going down to this island here, Malahide, and setting it up on our oil route and setting it up with uh, improved building. Actually, just before I do that, there's two things I want to do in this episode for sure. Or at least one thing. One of them is I want to interrupt every now and then we're actually right on time. Arthur Gasparov's battleship that's cruising around here. So right as it passes us, we're just going to activate that and go hostile for a moment. Let's just pull right ahead of him. He's not going to know what hit him. There you go. <laughs> Um, and that's for potentially an upcoming war with, with Arthur. Let's see what we got. Got some sugar cane. So these have just been moving between these islands, but of course I want to keep Benty alive. So to do that, I periodically have to activate the pirate flag, which lasts just a couple of minutes. And then uh, we can go and attack. I got to be careful though. You can't be next to these defenses. They'll take us out. We should be able to take out a lot of these frigates. Just send them back for a little while. You know? Just send them back. Ship under attack. Ship under attack. Love, absolutely Ship loving the grape shop borders that we have as well. Vicious. Um, I've gotten in the habit of not really checking what he drops because I've been killing a lot of ships. 
every now and then, and th he's really not dropping that much, so nothing too crazy. But every now and then, you might get an item. We got a guide. See you later. <laughs> Just under attack. We are pirates, after all. Now, the ships that are under attack, that's just, just me, under right? Attack. He hasn't gone to war with me, has he? <laughs> That'd be a nightmare. No, he's fine. He doesn't mind at all. Non-aggression pact, zero chance. Wow. How esoteric. Better go back to your door. Still zero for non-aggression. But oh well, at least he's a little bit happier. We'll just leave this here. We don't need to really move them. This is going to have a... It lasts five minutes, so it'll just cool down for the next two and a half minutes. Sorry, not cool down. It'll last in pirate mode for two and a half minutes, and then it has its cool down of 20 minutes, right? So we'll just chill where we are. He's got some extra ships coming around the corner, actually. Maybe we could just quickly go for them. I'm just be a bit worried. We're between three defenses, and if you just play it wrong, you might get caught by them. So just try to keep it still. If we get if we get a message that we're under attack, we'll, we'll zoom back here. Uh, so the other thing I want to do was in Cape Trelawney, which I have to work on, obviously. There's lots of stuff going on here. I plan on, I've, I figured out where, what I want to do with the villagers, or at least my initial idea. And I think we said it before, but it's basically to move them up to this lake at the back of Crown Farms. And basically just have like a really organic looking farmer villager town. Chip that have, attack. they actually have like, um, pigs and, and sheep and all of that embedded in and around the towns. So that's the idea anyway, so. That's okay, it's just Jean Lafortune. We're of course pirates, so we're even against the pirate ships as well. Attention for the Admiral. Could pre-fire this one here. Going pretty fast. Chip Sales. All right, it's fine. Don't worry, you old man. We're all good. Chip Looks like there's a bit attack. of a defense down here. Is there? Not really. I'm looking on the radar to see does Arthur have any like armadas moving Chip around. But Benty looks pretty safe. You know, she has her little port here. Nothing else is really surrounding it. Not many ships in the region Chip now. Under attack. I think she'll be just fine. We're actually up to a new population milestone as well, 75,500. If you remember, we needed to reach 74,600, so I've almost gained on like a thousand extra from certain items that I put into, into the town halls and things. I guess people might be curious, so I'll just check on them really quickly as well. Um, so let's have a look here. So I've, I'm using Saint D'Artois, Vision of the Valley, max residence 20%, chance of illness is down, chance of riots is down, and bonus residence from having fish, bread, canned food, university coffee, light bulb, champagne, steam carriages, chocolate, and fried plantains. Uh, then we have Louis P. Heck 8, arm puncturing pioneer. Again, max residence 10%, affects old world and new world, and so does she, but neither of them affects scholars. And then illness is down with him 50%, so these people virtually have no chance of getting sick. Good thing, because the hospital is on the other side of town anyway. And then bonus residence plus one from the same items, pretty much. How thrilling! A renowned personage has arrived. Next we have then the contraception regulation. Max residence 20%. Happiness is reduced a little bit though, of course. <laughs> bonus residence two then from very similar things also. So lots of bonus residence, lots of increase to max residence. Um, and that's giving us something like 64 per household, which is crazy. And of course, then the Iron Schlong is reaching over and giving us a 10% increase also. So lots of modifiers being stacked on top of these houses, giving us 64 per each one. Now, that, that kind of makes up for a lot of the space that we lost here, you know, because I wasn't using those items before. So it kind of works out that way. But obviously, if we filled that in, we'd get even more. Our thing is just about to wear out, actually. Ah, it looks like we're not hitting it anymore. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Suddenly impervious Attention to our damage. To the That's all good. We're okay now. Let's sail back up to Benty. Um, alright, so... Let's hop over to... So yeah, I was talking about Cape Trelawney, right? I was saying out here, by the lake, I think this would be a really nice place for it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is bring with me all of this kind of industry here, the livestock industry, as it were, and try to integrate these farms in and around the houses to see if I can make it look like an organic type of village. And then obviously try to give them maybe a town hall or two or something like that. We're kind of low on influence. And we're not getting any more, any more for a very long time, if ever. Probably never, to be honest. <laughs> we need 83,000 population to get the next batch of influence. So I'm, I'm probably never going to get any more. Uh, in my game, anyway. 
So it doesn't really matter. We don't need to give them town hall benefits, but it, it, it would always be nice to. There's one room for town hall back here. I'm saving a little bit of influence for now just because I might end up using... Um, I might end up having to build ships to fight Arthur soon. Um, okay, so yeah, so this is my plan is anyway, like I said, to bring all those farmers out here. I won't do it during this episode because it, it, it would just be a long time in moving stuff. So instead, we'll try to do something a bit more proactive. Um, I think, largely speaking, demands are met everywhere, though. So I was kind of struggling between episodes to think about where to build. I know that these guys are low on penny farthings and pocket watches. Um, so I thought maybe we could work on that and set them up. And then as well, if we want to build on that other island back in the old world, we could do that. So trying to get them their stuff to keep them happy. Curiosity. Penny farthings. So I noticed that globally, I think, penny farthings are actually totally fine. It's like we just never set up the route to bring them here. Yeah, so that seems to be the case. However, things do get complicated now because I actually ran into an issue between episodes where I ran out of coal. It was a very, very, very slight decrease over time. Which meant, like, after, like, literally 10 hours, then coal started running out uh, as a knock-on effect to the Arctic and stuff like that. So what I did was I traded the excess penny farthings we have for just a full batch of coal. And that got everything kickstarted again in Docklands. Um, so if we go to the trade history, we can see that roughly, roughly we need to have it around 87 to 1500. Is kind of roughly where it's coming in at, depending on how the coal is working itself out so basically we need to have 87 every 20 minutes roughly let's say 90 right round it up 90 penny farthings in excess that can go into the docklands so i don't know if i've got that that's where it gets kind of complicated so something might have to be done about getting more coal um to be honest i can't even remember if i've if i'm getting coal from cape trelawney but we had loads over there as well so it might just be a, a, a root issue more than anything i'll just get rid of this this was a temporary thing i was doing as well um so yeah, let me just check that. Coal? So coal is a multi-regional thing that goes... That doesn't actually go to the new world. So it might be a cake to the old world. Raw materials. Okay, so we do bring coal in. But only in very small batches of 50 per ship. Hmm. And this just arrives at Lusk. Yeah, so three ships fill up with all this and just come in and dump it at Lusk. Interesting. Okay. I'm thinking of... People ask me to get Great Easterns. I'm thinking, like, we could make a Great Eastern. Ten influence. And just dedicate it as a big coal ship that arrives here and dumps coal in here. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Is we need... We also you? need Penny Farthings constantly working. So that we're earning ourselves... What is it? Pocket watches and gramophones. So that's another reason for the slowdown. It's quite an interesting chain of events. When you stop... When you're producing so much of something that you run, you stop producing it, then you don't get the extra goods that come from the cycles, you know, of your items. Anyways, I think I've explained that before. So let's just get to work. This is nothing short of a major discovery. I need to see, do I have free ships at all <laughs> to send this stuff? Because I'm starting to think I don't. So penny farthings. So cape, cape to the old world is what we need to look at. And what's going there. And what could we be bringing back. So we have a route that just takes from Lusk. Sewing machines. And brings them to Crown Farm. So I'm going to reduce this down. And we'll add on the penny farthings. And see if that works out. Yeah, because it's not actually picking up a full amount anyway. So that's good. So let's just do that. Seems to fix it, actually, really. I mean, I think it will. Where's the ship now? The ship is just making its first delivery. So the other one, then, was pocket watches. So how can we get pocket watches moving here? One final look. I'll have a look in a second, sir. So pocket watches. The only route I have is taking it to the New World. Now, I wonder how many do we have? 289 on the Island of Swords. It seems like we've pretty much matched that correctly. Although, remember... We're not earning some pocket watches because our penny farthings are backed up right now. So just as a very lazy and quick way to solve this issue. The crane. What are you doing, by the way? Why are you waiting so long? He's in a queue. God, this looks like a nut mess, doesn't it? On our way. See, this thing is so... I mean, I really hope they patch this or fix that. This ship was, like, waiting in a queue, even though there's nothing in front of it. 
like nothing. Obviously, there's three peers here. My guess is it's something to do with this queue still being here. And a lot of people have been very frustrated with this and said, like, could you just, like, shorten your Docklands and move this? I will never do that, just so you know. <laughs> because I've given up at that point. If that's if that's what I'm going to do, then I might as well never have a, anything. You know, oh, why not have more population, get more influence, get rid of your Central Park then? You could, where does it end? And you could say, well, it ends with just the Docklands. Never, I say. Okay, this was built to perfection. It's the best Docklands in the world, and I really don't want to like just remove it so I can slam in a do like a main wharf somewhere. So please, please, if anyone from Ubisoft Minds is listening and they have the wherewithal to either try to be able to fix that or somehow put a pause on your docks or something like that, you know, like if I could just hit a pause button and say, "Don't pick up anything from here," that'd be quite nice. Um, I don't know which one would be easier to do. I'd need to see the code. He's trading now, though, so it's okay. Stations. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, just to get this thing kick-started, is just use any old ship here and um, pick up, let's see, pick up a bunch of penny farthings. That will get production turning again. And we'll just make a manual delivery for the first time, just to kick-start it, like I said, to Crown Farms. This now gets all the traffic going again. Yes. These will all start producing stuff. And I have checked, we should have enough iron and caoutchouc to supply all these buildings. No problem. Look at the amount of them. Madness. What productivity do we get up to? 314% perfect productivity, it says. I'm pretty happy with that. Get out of the way! Jesus! Man, it looks so good with the uh, sunrise and the, the, the pollution <laughs> of all our chemical factories. Oh yeah, I actually reduced productivity of this. I was thinking like, how did we get 50%? Because you can't actually do anything with these. But it's 200 by default. Anyways, uh, so that should fix penny farthings, I think, and that should give us some extra pocket watches. So let's have a look globally at pocket watches and see where we're at. So we make eight globally when our buildings are working and our items are rolling, and we consume six, and that's global. So that means that includes uh, Cape Trelawney right now and Crown Farms. So that means, in theory, we can afford to take some away and s send them out that way. But something I've been struggling with, actually, is seeing, is determining how you can split where you send things. Uh, so let me just talk about that in a second. I'm just wondering, am I getting rid of pocket watches here? No. What about here? Nope. Oops. And no. Okay. So that means we should just have pocket watches in excess. So, what I'm going to do, I think it's only consumed on two islands, I would imagine. This one and the one in Crown Farms. So that means, if I'll just scroll down, we can see what the consumption rate is here. It's 5. Which means I think the consumption rate in Crown Farms would be 3. Okay, 2. So globally? I don't, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it says 6 globally. Swords has 5. Crown Farms has 2. Globally, it has 6. Hmm. Shouldn't it be 7? <laughs> Maybe it's just on the edge of like a point of a, it's been rounded up or something. Let's just say it's seven. But that means anyway, it's five to two, right? Five are going to um, swords. So for every five that go here, two need to go to Cape Trelawney. So that's the way I think you'd have to split it in your, like in the amounts that we're picking up. I don't know if that's correct. Like I've got the right idea there, but I feel like I do. We have so to go to press. Oh, no, I didn't get to read it. Shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. So let's just see the Cape Trelawney route again. And we could add on pocket watches onto this one. Lusk to Ke Crown Falls investors. One, two, three, four, five. So we left it with room for the pocket watches. And I feel like we don't need to be picking up 50. That's kind of like my point here. It's like, I think we only need to pick up like 10. And then over time, it should work itself out, I, I would hope. Let me just try to think about it as well. I mean, probably not. This probably isn't right, but I'm just going to do that and see how it goes. 
So 15 there. And then the other place, the one that we take it to swords, we're going to reduce it down to 35. Even though there's so many ships, that's where it really changes things. But let's just see. Does it, make ch does it make a difference overall? You guys can let me know how wrong I am with this. I feel like if you just leave it at the max amount, it works itself out. But maybe, maybe this will help. I don't know. All right, so we'll see in a little bit of time whether or not now, uh, wrong place, Crown Farm starts to get this both of those demands met. The stomping ground. Because we're leaving a lot of money on the table, but also happiness. You know, we want to try to fulfill all the goods if we can. Never going to get to the um, steam carriages. I don't plan on doing that. We do. Ha I mean, I said I didn't. It wouldn't be getting more influence, and yet I somehow have just gotten ten more influence. Didn't quite see how I did that. How the hell did I do that? No idea. Did I get rid of something? Something catch fire? I don't know. Um, but we do have 2,500 engineers that aren't being used, and I guess in theory you could just upgrade them to be investors and try to work that out and probably use the influence that way, so... We do have that ability, I guess. By the way, when I was speaking about the park, that's the kind of situation you get into, right? This tile base surrounded by grass. We've done it here, but what the hell? Uh, we've done it here, but yeah, I didn't want to do that like all over the park. I think it would look really weird. I want to know if She's going to walk up there. Watch this. Well oh, maybe not. Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> God, sickness is such a high chance up here. Other things I'd like to do is get better items, I guess. Workforce 40% on... Workers and villagers. Do we even need that? Chance of illness, 60%. No wonder people are getting so sick. Residents with the church filled are provided with rum. So I've just lost nearly a thousand workforce, but nobody will be getting as sick. I mean, people actually haven't been getting sick anyway, but it's kind of an interesting one. So what's that? Captains of Industry, Volume 31. Income per house is nice as well. Let's stick Pope Lucius in there as well. He, he gets around a bit, I guess. And he's providing them with, I mean, with rum. Oh, they don't even consume rum. That's a bit of a silly one, isn't it, then? He should be in here. Probably a better idea to actually fulfill the uh, town halls that aren't actually full. Income per house, happiness. Let's see. Maintenance range of the variety theater is increased. We do cover a variety theater here. Range 7. Department of Welfare is giving range 14. Now that's... Because of the global... That's because of back on swords. It must have lost its... Yeah, so it's just below. It's 150 low. Pollution 20 from the oil refinery. Nature countryside. And a dream destination. What does that mean? Is that because we fulfilled the quests of um, the tourists? That that countryside thing is interesting. I wonder if repainting the trees, does that bring back the countryside? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it didn't do anything now, but maybe over time when it grows? I need to just reset the camera and stop zooming. If you zoom in and out, it's basically talk changing the field of view as you're doing that. And that's what causes a lot of the slowdown while you're moving and zooming and then looking at different things and all these objects are loading in and out. Yeah, it's not it's not coming back up right now. But um, let's see. No festival, church, pub, variety theater. What gives us the most? The zoo is giving us 2,700. The town halls are giving us 1930 back. Wow. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's just go back to Crown Falls. Crown Farms, excuse me. And sort these guys out. So that town hall hasn't been built yet. Affects the range of the university. That's the kind of thing I'm more curious about. Does that have full range? It actually does. Yeah, I think I built this place so that they do reach everything, which is good. So we probably don't need her, actually, then. 
Um, provides everybody with beer. I mean, that seems like it'd be. Oh, we already have him, do we? Oh, no, we don't. Residences with the pub need fulfilled are provided with bread, sausages, and fish. This provides everyone with beer, so I'll save some stuff there. Workforce 10%. Doesn't affect anything else. Okay. Why not? Just adding some things in. I mean, these might change later. Like I said, I'm not really planning on getting that much more population. We'll see, though. It'll all come down to how much of the factory needs to change, because we're going to be building out this, re reorganizing this in the next episode, and um, building up the kind of factory, as it were, of the island. So it'll all depend on, yeah, if we need more workers and more people, then we'll stick in items that give us that. Otherwise, we'll just try to make the ones that are here happier, or something like that, I you know? can appreciate the art of others. He's buying stuff in Tabarim. So, I want to see, are we short? Predicted. Yeah, so this is the house that's short on the university. 2%, that's all it is. Feels bad, man, though. Feels real bad, man. Alright. Back to Crown Farms. Has our delivery been made yet? Apparently not. Wow, really? Our pirate ship hasn't made it here. Hey, there it is. 150 penny farthings. So basically, I've just been kind of stalling in a way, waiting to see have we reached... So they still don't have their penny farthings or pocket watches. Still waiting to see that. Okay, well, our ship is coming in with the penny farthings any second now, so that's good. And the other thing I wanted to do is start building up this island. This might be a way to get a little bit of extra population. So what do we make here? Grapes, grain, potatoes. We can obviously change these fertilities to pretty much anything we want and build it up as well. See how that goes. This is such a heavily dominated uh, area by Arthur. Everything is, I guess. It's just me and him now. It is quite interesting. People did mention this before with Docklands. It's like, if you just put in really big numbers and say, like, just let it figure itself out. Basically, if you're always taking in your max storage amount, it'll only take in what it can, and then eventually it just balances out to only take in, like, this kind of average amount. So this place is just... I've just whacked all these numbers up really sky high. I never really looked back uh, at this place. And then looking at its trade history, it's like, oh, yeah, it does stay around the same number every time, you know? Roughly, anyway. It can fluctuate a little bit depending on when a ship gets here to pick something up, but looking at fish, it's like, yeah, that's about 300 each time. That You know, it's about 22 to 23 glasses each time that have been sold, and, and so on and so forth. So this place just has such... This is why I, <laughs> I said at the very start of the series, if people remember, I was like, this place is just so... It makes the game so much easier, is there's this massive, massive island that just gives you room to have huge populations and just massive excess of goods. Because it's all flat terrain as well. There's no, no rivers that really flow through this part. So you can do so much with it, and that's kind of why I left it. Because I feel like the game is much more interesting when you've got a little bit of challenge in there to try and f work with what you got. And don't just spread out to every island and, and so on and so forth. Um, Alright, let's see what we can build here then. While we're waiting. 373 population. At Malahide. We have iron deposits that aren't being worked. We have three of them. One, two... Three. Oh, we can upgrade one or two houses. I don't think that's a problem. Oh, yeah, I want to check the newspaper. The newspaper is actually great at telling me... Oh, it was actually a good one. At telling me what we're running out of and where, so we can always stay on top of it. Good thing is we can just go back. Although I've been, um... <laughs> propaganding the, the bad stuff. Over and over again, I guess. Yeah, so next time it says, like, oh, there's a shortage of whatever, then I'll know where I really need to fix things. Man, there's festivals everywhere as well. It's so nice. Yeah, so I think I'm going to build a Great Eastern because I did just seemingly get 10 influence for free. I don't know where I got it back from, but sure. Let's build a Great Eastern. How long does it take? Uh, I can't see. Why not? 
18 minutes. Am I blind? Why doesn't it tell me the, the cooldown time? I don't know. It normally does when you build anything else, right? You gained an influence bonus. Yeah, there's a counter construction time remaining. You lost an influence bonus. Basically, if you build one more military ship, we get um an influence bonus. I just turn these off. Copies. Actually, we don't need them. All right, let's hop back over to the new world. See if we can do another raid. I. Betty's actually got a quest for us. Fleet moving in convoy. Um, yeah, so I meant to say you can obviously probably tell that there's really not that much left for me to do other than the only thing you could do in this game at this point is try pu pu push your population further if you wanted to and further and further and further this obviously people nothing short of a major discovery. frequently get it up to about I'd say the normal number to get it up high is about 150,000 and then when you start going beyond that you're into quite um, skillful territory I guess or min maxi territory where you're really pushing what you can do and then obviously it just scales like crazy some people go up to a million when you get the right items and you you block everything up together properly uh, I've seen some layouts posted on the Anno reddit actually of just like perfect investor layouts and how you can guarantee to never have like a fire you never even need to look at it again and stuff like that um, but for me what I plan on doing now is only uploading twice per week I need to figure out the day. I don't know exactly the day, but it's going to be twice per week because I'm going to start up a Frostpunk Let's Play alongside this, uh, which is going to deal with the last autumn DLC. Uh, and I love Frostpunk. If anyone hasn't seen it, I did a, a Let's Play already on it. I think I mentioned it. Great Let's Play. I, I recommend it just because it really edge of your seat kind of gameplay, I feel like, for a strategy game that isn't quite common. Um, so it really went better than I could have hoped. I'm hoping the next one goes as well as that. But uh, largely speaking, I plan on doing two episodes of Frostpunk per week and two of Anno. Um, and the Anno ones are going to be focused on pretty much just like big time lapses and then a little bit of like chatting and, and talking through some... Solving any minor logistical problems that we might come across uh, like we just have today. Because the time lapses do end up taking quite a long time. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking of like going to this island. We just set up grapes here, maxing out, like trying to use every bit of workforce we have. That's what I'm going to be doing, and then um, beauty building it. That's kind of the idea. So we're going to be doing that with Crown Falls soon. I can't do the whole island in one go. But the thing is, it's like we're making almost everything we need here. Almost. Obviously, Penny Farthings and Pocket Watches. I suppose Penny Farthings, we could have been making them here ourselves. Why didn't I think of that? In fact, was I doing that before, and that's why there was no root here? That could be the case. So we obviously need to bring in Cowchuck, but Cowchuck we could bring in here. How did I not think of doing this? Just setting it up locally. God, I'm an idiot. It's amazing we made it to, what is it, 86 episodes in total? It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, someone actually pointed out in the comments a while back, and I had thought Your of it a while ago, but sport. not at the beginning of the series, which is that... um. It would have been cool if you named the series like 1801, 1802, 1803, and it's like gone through the years. So you could think of it that way. We're in 1886 right now, uh, which I, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool. And then, I don't know, Hans von Schlong, he's like 100 years old then by this point, even if he started as like a 20-year-old. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look what we could get rid of, rid of here. Maybe fur coats? We seem to be producing a lot of that. And we'll just leave it at 250. It doesn't really matter for now. And then we'll just build our own penny farthings. And see if we can cope. Yeah, let's do that. So how much is it? it requires electricity. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, yeah, I guess. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Oh yeah, you could have the chemical plants here, because I was running a bit low. Well, not really low, but I was slightly running low on engineers if I wanted to keep my um, thing fully stocked, my research institute. So let's just see, how many are we going to need? That will potentially produce four, so we need just two. That's just it. And that would fix... Yeah, that would be it. That would be it if we get, can get that up and running. 
So that demand, Kowchuk is maxed out here. I, I have no idea how that's happened. Definitely doesn't arrive here. Do we bring it in through Darklands or something? High pitch voice? Oh, I already am. Look at that. It's almost like I have thought of all of this before and somehow completely blocked it out of my memory. Which is bizarre, to say the least. So iron then will be the next thing. Steel. Now, all of our, our major area for steel is done in the old world. But I guess we make some locally here. Which seems like a bit of a waste, really. Like the it's the so I'll have a look at intermediate and see steel. We demand more than we make. Okay. Well, let's just make another one then. That's going to put strain on coal and iron, but we've got absolutely loads of that. And we've got plenty of workers, so there's really no problem there. Okay, so, well, that was a complete waste of the beginning of the episode because I've just basically fixed penny farthings without having to have them on that route at all. So I'll cancel that part of the route. I'll just leave it, leave it as that. But it is interesting because I still need to move them off that island <laughs> in some ways if we want to have um, pocket watches uh, working properly. There you go. Wow. I can't believe it was so quick. I could... Think of that. I could just put down two buildings and that would have been it. Or three. God damn. The place is electric! I know. Well, at least you're happy now. Surprising. They have their pocket watches. They don't have the jewelry though. That is a... That is a challenge. For sure. Especially since we export gold. And I don't think... Can you get gold locally on islands? Somehow. Let's see, gold. Anyone that produces gold as a byproduct. We did have that guy we got from, yeah, this woman actually, sorry. Affects clockmakers and jewelers, produces a little bit of extra gold, but obviously needs the gold ore to get them started. Affects fisheries and pearl farms. Instead of gold, the building processes brass. Ah. Instead of gold, the building processes gold ore. Goldsmith. Gilbert. I think we actually have him, don't we? Apparently not. Goldsmith Gilbert. That seems pretty good. If we could just deliver gold ore here, ore into the Island of Lusk, we could just make jewelry without having to use it. I wonder how much more time efficient that is. Yeah, let me check that out, just out of curiosity. So, in the Island of Lusk, we take in gold ore, I think. Is that possible? We do take in gold ore. Dude, then it's that's solved. All you need to do is get that guy, gold Mr. Gilbert, whatever, bring in gold ore, genius. and then just make jewelry locally. And the other person could do the same thing. I'm like, probably the last person in the world to figure this out, but that seems really good. <laughs> All right, let's do that. That actually seems like a really fun thing to do, because it's quite different. So Goldsmith Gilbert, instead of gold, the building processes gold ore for jewelers. And then for clockmakers, she does the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. She does brass. Ah, okay. Well, still, jewelry is actually the thing I have the biggest problem with in this campaign. So much of my Docklands is spent on bringing in jewelry. So Goldsmith Gilbert, we'll queue him up in the Research Institute. Yeah, just can we just cancel that? Is that possible? Must be possible. Oh, there it is. We have the cache to attract. Fourteen minutes. Sure. Boom. I'm not up to ten thousand anymore, though. That's something that's saddened me with this new park. We had ten thousand, just over ten thousand before, but now I've obviously taken a huge chunk out of my territory. So, what can you do? You know, what can you do? I can't. Um, this town hall isn't hitting like another group of houses like all on this side for instance so it doesn't get to raise everyone up by like 22 24 extra house uh, people per house which would be quite nice but such is the life of the beauty builder 
Um, but that's for, for still pretty good. I mean, we're getting 14 minutes. We get this character. Then we're going to go back to uh, Cape Trelawney. We're going to pull in some... I... Let me just drop that off. Going to pull in through Docklands some ore. Gold ore. And we can get rid of any number of things. I wonder what the exchange rate for gold ore is like. Probably not the best, but uh, let's see with the fur coats. Oh my god, it's amazing. Okay. <laughs> One to nine. Um, I can't imagine we'd need more than a thousand, but uh, sure. Sure, actually just fill it, like we said before, right? Just fill it. 3,400 is our capacity here, so just to make it look nice, we'll do that. Okay, and then clockmakers. And jewelers. So jewelry is in the investor category. Jewelers, jewelry. So we need 150 artisans for jewelers. Interesting. So we can have four of them. And do we have a free town hall for this stuff? No. Or a trade union, I should say. There's one over there, one there. One over th that's not being used. Alright, I'll make a little new one, and then we'll sort this out in the next episode. Of, like, get giving it power and making sure everything's all good with it. So power is flowing out to there. Jewelers. So they're still gonna need pearls, right? It's just instead of gold. Yeah, yeah, okay. run out of um, concrete. So we're going to pop him right in there. That'd be great. Wow, this guy's pretty good. Productivity 70% workforce reduced. Oh yeah, I think we had to look at him before. Uh, he provides extra goods. All carpentry works and window makers. He provides pearls. So let's have a look for pearls. Clay pits, salt petter, sand mines, and limestone quarries. Uh, and then the other one is gold. Jewelers, even. So ferris can increase the productivity and reduce the workforce of jewelers. Um, clockmakers, jewelers, and spectacle factories get 35% productivity. We'll stick that in there. Alright, we could double this up with something else as well. Um, I'm afraid that's going to have to be it for this episode. Sorry to leave it on a bit of a tease, but excuse me, with that research institute, definitely going to get those items, drop them off here. I'll bring over some concrete as well. And then we'll have four jewelers that are going to be hopefully producing quite a lot. Uh, we're going to have to set up then maybe bringing in pearls here also. Which again, it's not that big of a deal. And this will solve one of the last problems I had in the game, which was just a massive shortage of jewelry all the time. So much Docklands, like I said in uh, Swords, is all based on bringing in little bits of jewelry because I'm just constantly low on it. So I was kind of spreading several different goods across the board to bring in jewelry to make up for the tourists' needs for it and the investors. And now we can just kind of hopefully cut all that out. So I'm just going to look at globally what do we need for jewelry. We need 16 tons per minute. 16. Now we already produce a decent amount locally, it's said. It's just, it just looked like um, 14 or something there. This will produce every 30 seconds one. So we need eight. We would need eight buildings uh, if we wanted to do it at the normal standard kind of rate. And we have four. So with Ferris, we can get 50%. With this, we're going to get 35%. And with Mr. Gilbert, I think it was... Does he improve productivity at all? Let's check. He doesn't, but um, he does replace the input. Okay. So we'd be up to about 85%. Hmm. Yeah, close to... I mean, we only need like five, five, maybe six buildings then, right? And we'd have enough. Pretty good. Solving problems. Feels good, man. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on the days and the schedule because it depends on a, a few different factors I won't bore you with. But um, normally this series was Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. So it's only going to be two of those same days per week. It'll very likely be Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it could be Sundays and Tuesdays. And I know reducing the amount of hours isn't, 
isn't the best thing to hear, but the Frostpunk series is only short, and when that's over, I'm expecting the High Life to come out, and then I'll go back up to three per week while the High Life is there, and we're, we have lots of stuff to do again. If that sounds good. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching and for watching so far into the series. I mean, 50 episodes into this second season here and 36 of the first one for a total of 86 in total. It's pretty crazy. So, we're, I mean, it's, that's, a lot, that's a long time. People have asked me, how many hours do we have in this? Boom. 184. And I'll tell you what, very little of my time is spent fast forwarding or not doing something. So... I've like doubled, even more, 6, six 12, 8, I've tripled, that's ex such a great reference to how I always say this takes ages to put together, it's because yes, it is, what you see in one episode, it takes three times longer on the average, and it's totally true, um, but anyway, there you go, alright, thank you guys again very much for watching, I appreciate all the support, and I'll put out a community post as well, if you follow me on Twitter or Discord, that's where I'll let you know exactly when the episodes are going to be uploaded, sorry I haven't got it figured out just yet, that's going to be it, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.